So the first thing you're going to do is just get the little pieces that you made. This is just out of paper. This is the bottom of the eye. And then here is the color portion of the eye. And then here is the pupil. And then I have the colors that I want to cut out the portions of the eye. So I have the black portion of the eye and then also the color portion of the eye which is this beautiful mint green. Then I just place, this is the bottom of the eye, I'm going to place it right on my felt, the black glittery felt that I chose for the bottom of the eye. And I'm just going to cut a square around this piece. Then I can take and finish forming the outline. So I'm just going to cut around the paper outline that I have. So now I've cut out each of the pieces that I need then for the Then you can eye. lay the color portion on top of the black felt. Make sure that you have the glitter portion. So I'm going to use this on my... Oh, I guess I can use that like that. So this will be my left eye on the dog because I like the glitter portion to be showing. Then you can take and place the pupil. Then just take your sequin and place that onto the pupil. And then for the left eye, I put the sequin over towards the left and then on the right eye, I'll put it on the opposite then side. Then just take some of your Betalon monofilament You're going to need a small, slender tapestry needle for the eyes. Then just take and place the monofilament on your slender, thin tapestry needle or darning needle. You're going to need one with a pointy end. Take the eye. Make sure that you don't mess up the design. And then you can go through the front at first to make the hole or the opening. And then you can just go right through that opening. And then come through. Whoop. Through my sequin. And then you can just place the sequin onto your needle that way and then just come through make sure that you leave a long enough loose yarn in on the back for tying a knot and I really like this clear color for the monofilament because you can't see it and then you just go so I went right through the center of the sequin and now I'm on the outer edge of the sequin and I'm going through all layers of the eye and then I'm going to tie a knot on the back. Make sure that your tapestry needle is slender enough or your darning needle is slender enough to fit through the hole of your sequin. if you want to use sequins for your eye. Then you just take and sew all of the pieces together. I go a couple of times around the sequin. So I go up close to the outer edge of the sequin.
and then I just go right back down the center of the sequin and I do that a couple of times and then I just take my monofilament and then I sew a few stitches around the outer edge of the eye and the outer edge of the pupil to hold it in place. Now for whatever reason you can't find this monofilament you could use the same colored thread and a sewing needle and thread and do the same thing but I would recommend using the same color so it doesn't show through on the eye. I like this monofilament because it is thick and it's also clear so you can't really see it. And then you just keep sewing the eye in place. So this is what my eye looks like, the left part of the eye. And remember you're going to make the right eye the same way but just remember that you're making the opposite side. So you want to make sure that you have the glittery portion if you have that and that you're making the eye for the right side. So this is what mine looks like on the front and then on the back and then I just left the clear monofilament for sewing it onto the front panel. After you finish your eyes you can set them aside. For now we're going to sew the snout onto the front panel. Go ahead and get your same colored yarn as the snout onto your tapestry needle and then you're going to take the front panel and your snout. You're going to take the bottom part of the snout, that bottom row, and you're going to line it up with the bottom of the front panel. So make sure that you line it up so that both sides are equal on the front panel. And then you're just going to sew the bottom of the snout to the bottom of the front panel. On each of my sides of the front panel I have five stitches on that side and then five stitches on that side and then I'm just going to sew the bottom of the snout only. Make sure that you tie a knot on the wrong side. And then you can continue sewing along the bottom edge the bottom of the snout only and the reason we're doing this is because we want to make sure that we center the snout and then we'll go to the top portion of the snout and sew that in place. So again you're just sewing the bottom portion of the snout. Then when you reach the edge Go ahead and tie a knot on the wrong side. And then you're just going to leave this long loose yarn end because we're going to come back to it and finish sewing the sides. But for now, the bottom edge is secure. So now you can go ahead and leave that long loose yarn end and then we're going to go to the top of the snout. Next you're going to take and sew the eyes on and you're going to need your slender tapestry needle or darning needle to do that because you're going to be going through the felt and you don't want to make large holes when you do that so you want to use your smaller needle to sew it in place you can see how I sewed my eyes. I, I'm about four rows down from the top and about a stitch in on each side. You want to make sure that your eyes are symmetrical or look similar on both sides. You don't want one eye crooked and the other eyes not. And I usually line up the sequins too so that they're, they look normal. And then once you're happy with the placement of the eyes, go ahead and sew them down. And then you're going to take and sew the top portion of the snout. You're going to want to kind of create a gentle triangle for the top of the snout. And you can see how I have it lined up with the, here's the bottom row 
of the eye go one, actually this is two rows, this counts as two rows, go two rows up and that's where you'll line up the top of the snout. Then you're just going to sew the top portion of the snout and then you're going to line up the sides and only sew down one side of the snout because now you're going to be ready to stuff the snout with craft stuffing. Then you can, after you finish stuffing the snout, you can take and finish sewing the last side of the snout down. And this is what mine looks like after sewing the snout down and sewing the eyes in place. For the wrinkle above the eye, you're just going to fold the wrinkle in place and then come up from the wrong side with your tapestry needle. And again, you're going to want to leave enough loose yarn end on the other side for tying a knot. And then you're just going to take and sew the wrinkle in place. So you're just going in and out, sewing the wrinkle or the fold in place, just like this. You're just going to put a couple of stitches to hold the wrinkle in place. Then I usually just go back towards where I went in. And then I go back down to the wrong side. And then I just tie a knot on the other side. And then you do the exact same thing on the other eye. And then you have your wrinkle in place. This is what my work looks like after placing the wrinkle above the eye. And this is what Cadbury looks like after using the regular 20 millimeter safety eyes and placing the wrinkles on his face. Now after we finish the face for the lab dog we're ready to actually you can leave the face front side up and then we're ready to sew the side panel around the head of the dog. So the first thing we're going to do is secure the corners. So you just lay the side panel down and you can line up the loose yarn ends and then just tie the loose yarn ends in place. And then you're just going to wrap the side panel around so you can secure the other corner. So you just take your tapestry needle. This is the long end that I left for sewing, but if you don't have the long end, just get the same colored yarn and then just put it onto your tapestry needle and then just join the opposite side. Just tie a knot. Then you can leave that loose yarn end for now because then you're just going to line up the side. So go ahead and lay down the side panel to measure it. And then I have a loose yarn end on that corner that I'm going to use to secure the side panel to the front panel. And if you don't have a loose yarn in there, you can just take some same colored yarn and just tie it in place. Then you can see how I got a little bit of yarn, same colored yarn, onto my tapestry needle on the opposite side so I can get the corner on that side. And this just helps to keep your front panel straight on the side panel and make sure you have enough going all the way around so that it doesn't end up crooked. And then I have all the corners secure so now I'm ready to sew the side panel onto the front panel. Now you're panel. ready to sew it in place so you're just going to lay the side panel down onto the front panel just like this and then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and just sew 
the edges together all the way around. And then come back. So now I've finished sewing the side panel all the way around the front panel except for the bottom of the front panel and this is what it looks like. Now you're ready to put the back panel in place. So you just kind of lay it right on top. Then you just take any loose yarn ends and put it onto your tapestry needle and then you're ready to just kind of tie the corners together just like you did for the front panel. It just helps to secure it and keep it straight for you. So go ahead and tie each of the corners in place just like you did for the front panel and then come back. So I finished sewing the back panel on. This is what my work looks like so far. Now you're ready to turn it back so that the right side is showing. You can see how my back panel looks straight, which is what you want. Now you could set the head aside because I'm going to show you how to make the ears. To make the ear, you're going to get the same colored yarn. You're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook Put it right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch the knot down. Now you're going to make a chain of 18. I'm just going to show you four of them. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 18, and then come back. After you finish your chain of 18, then you're going to take your crochet hook, and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So go into the second chain from the hook, go ahead and bring up a loop, Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And then come back. This is how my work looks after finishing one single crochet in every stitch across. We're going to move up to the next row. So you go ahead and chain one. Then you're going to turn your work. You're not going to work into this base beneath the chain one. You're going to go into the next stitch over and make one single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And you're going to keep repeating this pattern until you've completed 14 rows, not counting your initial chain. So this was your first row and now we're working our second row. And you're going to continue repeating this pattern of one single crochet in every stitch, then chain one, turn your work, and then repeat until you've completed a total of 14 rows, and then come back. This is how your work should look after finishing 14 rows of one single crochet in every stitch, and your stitch count should be 17. Even though our starting chain was 18, it's because we made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook, which ended up being a stitch count of 17 with 14 rows total. Now, after I finished my last stitch, 
my last single crochet in the last stitch. Instead of chaining one like we have been doing for the previous rows, you're just going to turn your work. So just turn your work and then you're going to go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. Make your single crochet and that counts as one. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over for your second single crochet. Next stitch over for your third single crochet and you're going to continue making one single crochet in every stitch across and then come back. I just finished my last stitch and I have a total stitch count of 16 stitches for that last row and then again you're not going to chain one you're just going to turn you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over so this is going to count as your first stitch and then one single crochet into the next stitch for your second stitch and again you're going to continue making one single crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So I just finished my last stitch for the row and I ended up with a stitch count of 15. So you can see that by not doing the chain one and just turning your work and making a single crochet into the next stitch over, you're decreasing your stitch count by one for that row. So when you're finished making your one single crochet in every stitch for this row, you're going to find that you only have 14 stitches, which is what you want. So continue just making one single crochet in every stitch across, and then just keep repeating this pattern of turning and making one single crochet into the next stitch until you reach a point. So here's my other ear. So you can see how you're forming a triangle for the ear. And when you reach the top where you only have three stitches left, come back and I'll finish the ear. So now you. you can see how here's the bottom of my ear and then it's forming a triangle towards the tip of the ear. I have three stitches left. I'm going to make one single crochet into each of the three stitches. Then I'm going to just turn my work. I have two stitches left. I'm going to make one single crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the last stitch. So I'm going to go into the last stitch I'm going to yarn over and just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you're going to need two of the ears made exactly the same way. Then just take your tapestry needle and put it onto the loose yarn end that's on the point of the ear and just kind of bury it by weaving it through the ear. Then you can go ahead and just cut the loose yarn end. Make sure that when you sew your ears onto the dog that you sew it so that the curved portion, the portion that likes to curve, is facing forward. Now you're ready to sew the ear in place. For my ear, I make sure that I line up with the medium, medial side of the eye, or the, yeah, the medial side of the eye, and I am about two stitches in on the side panel, and then I come up from the wrong side with my tapestry needle. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn in on the inside for tying a knot. Then you're going to want to kind of angle the ear 
And then for mine, as long as you have both ears angled the same, it doesn't have to um, be the exact same as mine, whatever position that you want your ear to flop forward. But for mine, I went in about one, two, three, four, five, six on the side panel at the bottom of the eye. And then you just kind of sew it in place. And I sew mine all along the edge of the ear. For me, this is the easiest way that I found to sew it in place. And then I can go back and make smaller stitches if I need to. Then the other ear is sewn on the exact same way. Just make sure that you have them lined up so that they're equal and they're not crooked. Now I'm going to show you how to make the body. You just take the same colored yarn or whatever color you want for the body of the dog. We're going to start with a magic circle. Just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then just take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then go ahead and place six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you can take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close the magic circle, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed. You can always close it more later. Then just take that loose yarn in and pull on that. Then just turn your work. We're going to start working in rounds. You're going to go into that first stitch. So take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch, grab both loops. Then we're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches. So two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches and then come back. This is how your work should look and you should have a total of 12 stitches in the round. Now we're going to be making 10 increase rounds, which means we're going to be increasing the stitch count working in rounds for 10 rounds. So go ahead and take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off. For the first increase round, you're going to be making one single crochet into the first stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. Then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. So I just finished that round and I have 18 stitches in the round and you'll notice that for each round, increase round that we complete, it's going to increase by 6 stitches. So now we're going to make our next increase round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up. And for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into 2 stitches.
and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. So now I went ahead and placed my yarn marker, and for this increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into three stitches, and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now sometimes you'll get stuff like this in your yarn and usually I'll go ahead and correct it without showing but since I had one person um, ask me how to correct this problem I'm going to go ahead and show you how I usually correct it. So basically what I do is I have to undo my work just to give myself some room for a loose yarn end to bury loose yarn ends. Then what I do is I just cut the portion out that I don't want. So here you can see somehow some blue colored yarn got mixed in with this yarn. So I'm just going to cut that flaw out of my yarn. Then I'm just going to take the two pieces of yarn and then tie them together again. Make sure you leave long loose yarn ends. That way your work will be more secure. It won't come undone easily. So then you can see how I just kind of tie a knot. Then I just let it go and then I just continue crocheting. So again we're on an increase round and on this increase round I'm at one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and usually as you can see the knot kind of works itself into your crochet work I just kind of push the yarn strands towards the back and just continue crocheting like I normally would so in the fourth stitch I'm making two single crochet into the same stitch and then I just keep crocheting and that's how I handle any flaws that are in my yarn. So now you should see what it is that we're doing. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up for your next increase round. So you can see that I have one single crochet into four stitches now and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch and you're just going to keep continuing this. Your next round will be one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch and you're just going to keep continuing and increasing your rounds until you get to one single crochet into ten stitches and then two single crochet into the eleventh stitch and then come back. This is how your work should look so far. I just finished my last increase round which was one single crochet into ten stitches and then two single crochet into the eleventh stitch which gives me a total of seventy two stitches in the round. Now you're ready to move your yarn marker up and you're only going to be making one single crochet in every stitch around. So you're not increasing your number of stitches and you're not decreasing the number of stitches. So every time you come around to the yarn marker you don't have to remove the yarn marker, you just leave it in place because it'll help you count the rows, but every time you come up to the yarn marker you should still have 72 stitches for the round. So you're maintaining the same number of stitches and you just make one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed a total of 27 rounds. So you want 27 rounds of one single crochet 
in every stitch around. After you're finished making one single crochet in every stitch for 27 rounds, this is what my work looks like so far. It forms a tube for the body. Now we're just going to make one increase round. So you're going to take your crochet, I mean your yarn marker, place it right where you left off. Then you're going to make one single crochet into 11 stitches. Go ahead and finish making one single crochet into 11 stitches. And then, then after you finish one single crochet into 11 stitches, just make two single crochet into the 12th stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into 11 stitches, and then two single crochet into the 12th stitch. Repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you can go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. And you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for 18 rounds. So 18 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So now, after you've finished 18 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, we're ready for the decrease rounds. You can see that it also makes a, a beautiful cocoon. So you can put some appliques on top of it if you want. But we're making the body of the dog. So now you can go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. And we're going to start our decrease rounds now. So you're going to make one single crochet into 11 stitches. I'm only going to make four of them with you. Go ahead and finish making one single crochet into 11 stitches and then come back. After you finish your one single crochet into 11 stitches, then you're going to make your decrease stitch. So you just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, then go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. Then you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You're going to make one single crochet into 11 stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And then just repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to make one single crochet into 10 stitches and then your decrease stitch. Then go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet into 9 stitches and then make your decrease stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And you guessed it! You're going to move the yarn marker up and this time it's one single crochet into eight stitches and then make your decrease stitch. So you're going to keep on decreasing in this manner. The next one would be one single crochet into seven stitches and then a decrease stitch all the way down until you get to one single crochet into four stitches and then a decrease stitch and then so come now back. You can see how the opening is getting smaller and smaller and you can go ahead and stuff the body now. And you can stuff more as you're closing. Then just go ahead and move the yarn marker up after you're finished stuffing it with your craft stuffing for your next decrease round. And you're just going to keep continuing decreasing just like you were. So this time I just finished one single crochet into four stitches and then my decrease stitch. So for this next round I'm going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then make my decrease stitch. And then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then just keep decreasing. The next round would be one single crochet into two stitches and then your decrease stitch and then the next round would be one single crochet into one stitch and then your decrease stitch. And when you're almost closed come back and then I'll show you how to slip stitch it closed. So now you can see how I'm getting smaller and smaller to the point where 
I'm just making decreased stitches around. So I'm just going into the next stitch and making a decrease stitch. And then once you can't make any more decreased stitches, you can start to make your slip stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and start making my slip stitches now. So I'm going to skip the next stitch and then I'm going to go into the next stitch with my crochet hook. Then I'm just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're just going to keep doing that all the way around until it's completely closed. I'm going to see if I can angle it better on the video. So here you can see how I'm skipping a stitch going into the next stitch. I'm yarning over and then I'm just bringing the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And just keep doing that all the way around until it's completely closed. Then when it's completely closed, just remove your yarn marker and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring it through the loop to finish off. And then just bring a little bit of the yarn through for a loose yarn end. And then you can just cinch down the knot. Then just take your tapestry needle and then put it onto the loose yarn end and then you're just going to go right in where you tied your knot and then come out anywhere and then just cinch down the loose yarn end. Then you can go ahead and cut the loose yarn end. This is how mine looks after getting both of the ears sewed on to the dog. Now we're ready. Now we're ready to finish closing the head. So you're just going to turn the head over and then we're going to join the crochet hook to the side panel where the side panel meets the front panel, that corner. So I'm just going to take my same colored yarn, just bring up a loop, go ahead and chain one, and then just tie a if knot. If you want to help you keep track, you can just add a yarn marker. And then you're just going to make a decrease round. You're going to make one single crochet into eight stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. Just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, then go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops for decrease stitch. Then go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into eight stitches and then a decrease stitch. If you have any remaining stitches, back to the yarn marker, just make one single crochet into each of the stitches. Now my head had 77 stitches around. Yours may be a little bit different because we sewed the side panel to the front and back panel, so you might have a stitch or two difference. That's okay, as long as you're pretty close. Then you're just going to take and move the yarn marker up for your next decrease round. For this decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches, and then make your decrease stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into seven stitches and then make your decrease stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. That time I had 69 stitches in the round and now we're going to make one last decrease round. For this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches and then make your decrease stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. After that decrease round I finished with 61 stitches in the round. Now just take your yarn marker and move it up and you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around until you've completed three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch and then come back. 
After you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and remove the yarn marker. Then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the head onto now the body. Now you want to go ahead and just stuff the head with craft stuffing and get your tapestry needle ready to sew the head onto the body. Now before you sew the head onto the body, make sure that you have the right side of the body because you'll notice that one side of the body where we closed is larger than the opposite side where we started. So this is the tail of the dog and the larger side where we closed is the head of the dog or the chest of the body. So you're just going to place the head onto the chest of the body and then you're just going to sew the head in place. Make sure that the nose is lined up so it's straight and then you're also going to want to make sure that you have the head up forward along the chest as far as you want it. Then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to sew all along the base of the head. You can also use safety pins if you need to hold the head in place. So this is where you can take your safety pins and then hold the head in place. This is how I placed my safety pins. One in the front and then one in the back. And then I'm ready to sew the So I'm head just going to take my tapestry needle and just go right into the body and then just sew right along the bottom or base of the head to the body. And you can come back even though the stitches are wide, you can come back later a couple of times to make sure that the head is sewn on securely. When I get to the safety pin, I just remove it and continue sewing with my tapestry needle. Now if you need more yarn, I usually leave a long loose yarn end so I can bury it easier. And then I usually like to tie the knot towards the back of the head. Then I just take my tapestry needle and then go in the body and up through the head with my new yarn. And again, you're going to want to leave a long, loose yarn end. And then just tie a knot and continue sewing with your new yarn that you just added. So I love this yarn because the head is really sturdy because of the type of yarn that I use. But sometimes the type of yarn is kind of softer and the head may hang forward on the body. If that's the case, you can lift the head by pulling on the back of the head and just creating a wrinkle and sewing the head down to the body and lifting the front of the head. But if you use the same kind of yarn that I did, then your head is probably being maintained up straight and you don't have to worry about that. But for those of you that have your head droopy, that's one method of correcting a droopy head.